Hey, action figure collectors. This one's for you. My name is Scott Toyguru Nightlick. I'm your host here on Spectre Creative, and I have been in the toy industry for well over 20 years, but I'm also a collector and a parent. And I know I state that a lot, but that's kind of what makes this channel very different. And I want to use this video to put a lot of questions that adult collectors have in place under, I guess, shall we say, one roof. Basically, I still get a lot of comments on questions about things like exclusives and empty pegs and I guess you could say frustrations that people have with how the toy industry is built and where the place for the adult collector is within this, you know, structure that we call the toy industry. And because I am a collector myself, and I have the added advantage of having been on the other side of the toy and had to have dealt with all of the graphs and the bottom line and the structures of producing product for a company to make a profit, I want to use that experience to try to mollify a lot of concerns because, honestly, it, it kills me inside when I see collectors complaining online about things that, not that they can't control, but things that aren't, that are sort of outside, that aren't designed for the collector base, but are kind of mainstays of the industry, things that function for the industry, and as collectors, we wonder why they don't function for us. Things like exclusives and things like delivery, things like character selection. So I want to use this video as kind of a catch-all. I've mentioned some of these issues in previous videos here and there, but this one is now kind of meant to be, if you watch one video on why does that happen and how do I think differently, this is your video. All right, so even just last night, I saw this paragraph on Foosh, which is one of my favorite fan sites. It's October 2020. So that all means that putting these in some kind of exclusive box set makes sense, even though exclusives are the tool of the devil and the worst thing that humanity has come up with outside of politics. Like most things in action figure land, it's a pathway to neurosis. Essentially complaining about the existence of exclusives and distribution of them, whether it's through a convention or a single retailer, what the, the, the author, I don't know if this is Nick who runs Foosh or one of his other commentators, but essentially saying that exclusives are really frustrating, especially when you live outside the U.S. I get it. And if an exclusive is with a company that's only in the United States. The bottom line is I feel your pain. I, I really do. And this isn't just like, you know, one of those political things. Before I was in the toy industry, I was just a collector. And I remember how frustrating it was having to go, you know, Walmart to Walmart or Target to Target or Toys R Us to Toys R Us looking for an item. Being on the other side, though, has given me insight into why exclusives exist and why the, the industry functions like this. So I want to clarify. So the three things I'm going to go over in this video is delivery and when items come in less than perfect condition, exclusives, why they actually exist, uh, not why it's frustrating to get them, but kind of asking people to maybe shift their point of view on them, and then character selection. When character selection isn't exactly in sync with what collectors want, why this is, and what we can do about it, because there is a solution. We all know everything happens for a reason, but, you know, we're always wanting to know what that reason was. Well, ask no further, because we're going to dive in and try to explain some of these things. And it is going to be with a little tough love, if you will, because uh, I'm going to be factual here, and it may be information that, I wouldn't say makes you mad, but, you know, it's going to provide insight it's not designed to provide emotional support. I'm just trying to provide the facts. And I know some of these sort of truths may be frustrating, but it is how the toy industry has to run as a business first. And I know as collectors, we see ourselves as a very powerful part of this business and companies should be so grateful that we buy their product and they should praise us and offer us sacrifices and put us on an altar. And unfortunately, that's not the way it is. And a big part of that is how small the toy industry is compared to other industries. This is a chart I've used before. It's showing sales on Amazon by category. And you could see toys is, you know, it's not the smallest category, but 
it's definitely not the biggest either. And that's really important foundation knowledge to know. The other thing, foundationally, is to understand the concept of fast, good, and cheap. You can't have all three. You kind of have to pick two. You can have things good and fast. You can have things fast and cheap. Or you can have things cheap and good. Trying to have all three is a recipe for disaster, especially from a production standpoint when a company is trying to deliver. All right. So exclusives. They are frustrating, as that, that uh, little paragraph from thefoosh.com explained. You know, when you've got to go to all these different retailers to find figures that are going to complete your collection and then hunting for them, going in the aisle and hoping that they might be there and they're not picked up by one collector who's going to buy all of them or a scalper, as well as seeing product that is like, well, wait a minute, is that for kids? Is that for collectors? I don't even understand why they have access to this product. It should, you know, it really should be held for me, the collector, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the truth about exclusives, and this is one of those things where, you know, you have to kind of look at the toy industry from a certain point of view, that many of the truths, you know, we hold on to are different if we look at it from the point of view of, say, the toy company and the manufacturer. And the bottom line with exclusives, they are not for you. You're like, what? What are you talking about, Scott? What do you mean they're not for me? Who else is going to buy them if not the adult collector or the kids? The reason that toy companies produce exclusive product is for retailers. It is to, it's part of a bargaining chip with retailers to get them to take the main line. If they want retailers to take Marvel Legends or Star Wars or DC Universe or Ghostbusters or whatever, toy companies need to produce exclusives in that line just for one company or one retailer. This becomes a magnet for the retailer to bring customers in looking for this. Whether they buy it or not, they're still in the store. And that's the idea. You're bringing them into the store. If they happen to find that exclusive and buy it, hey, yay, everyone wins. But most likely... They're going to walk out of that store with a lot more stuff that, that is a higher margin and a higher velocity driver for that retailer. Like toilet paper at Walmart has a 24-hour velocity. They sell out of all toilet paper in one day. It moves much faster than toys. So exclusives are for the, for the retailers in the end of the day. All right, packaging. The other one, when packages arrive in less than stellar condition, and I'm not talking about the shipper box like this. But I'm talking about when you open a package uh, you know, from an online retailer and it arrives all bent. I, I use this screen grab from Pixel Dan. Huge thank you to Pixel Dan. I, I cut him out just because he was making an odd face in this particular screen grab. But I wanted to show the, the uh, bent card was more important than his face. So uh, I did swipe this from Pixel Dan's video. Full credit. So and he made a whole video about the frustration of getting your quote-unquote collector product that is bent up like this that arrives in less than stellar condition because how are we going to mount it on our wall? Well, with this one, much as kind of the hard truth about the fact that exclusives are designed for retailers, not collectors, packaging, it depends on what your definition of damaged is. So we all look at this and say, that package is damaged. It's no longer in mint condition, as you know the comic book guy would say on The Simpsons. Well, yes, by our definition, but here is the shift, here is the pivot, and here is the you know, ontological shock, if you will. You have to think differently about this. Yes, we look at this package and say, oh my gosh, that's bent. I can't display it on my wall. I can't you know, resell it one day. I, you know, it's, it, it's horrible. This is the worst thing ever. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. And I get it because there's, you know, I... I do this too. I, I order stuff online and I like it to arrive in mint condition. The shift is that for a retailer who ships items, they don't see this as damaged. They see that same figure that Pixel Dan was holding as mission accomplished, product delivered, check, let's move on. Their goal is not to deliver the product in mint condition. It's to deliver the product as long as the toy works when you take it out of the package, that's what their that's their concern. That's their goal. They, their goal is not, and honestly, is never going to be to deliver product in mint condition. 
And again, going back to this graph, it's because the toy category is so small. And when you're dealing with a category that's so small, there aren't enough customers needing or wanting the product delivered in mint package condition to justify the huge expense of creating a pick and pack facility that has the capabilities to deliver product in mint condition. There are a lot of you know online retailers out there, and there are some that are better than others, but almost no one is in the business of delivering product in mint condition. Their goal is to deliver the product and the idea that you're going to open the package. Yes, a lot of us keep it in the package, but that's not their goal. Companies like Entertainment Earth, which I was actually fortunate enough to work for them for a while, that is what they do. Their goal is mint condition guarantee, and they, they charge a little bit more for shipping, but their, their warehouse, their facility, and this actually is their warehouse, I found this by Googling Entertainment Earth Warehouse, um, it, it, you know, it, it, it's basically, you know, they, they, they have the capability to do that. So this is really about expectations versus reality. We all want our items to arrive in mint condition, but that's not the goal of most online shippers. Their, their goal is just for it to arrive. If the card is bent, to them, it's still a success. And hoping for, you know, or being angry because not wanting this change is a little futile. All right, the third and final concept I want to talk about is character selection. So, for example, in the vintage line with Star Wars, they just announced a reissue of this Queen Amidala figure, who a few years ago, when she first appeared, was a huge peg warmer and partially clogged up the, the pegs from new figures shipping. Now she's coming out with an improved paint job. And a lot of fans I was reading online, you know, saying, you know, can you just change this Hasbro? Why did you do it this way? Well, one, when you're seeing a product this far along, it's shipping. They're not going to change it. Um, asking companies to change it once you've seen packaged samples, believe me, they're already on the water. They're already on their way to retailers. So that's not a change that's going to be possible. Now, the thing is, there are people out in the toy industry that really do get collectors and are really good with character selection. Bobby Vala, who used to work for Hasbro, who now runs Valiverse, he's a great example. But not everyone is like Bobby or myself or Daryl DePriest or Bill Beneke. Most people who sit in that marketing chair are people who are really good at business. They understand spreadsheets, they understand product development, they understand velocity and return and margin, and they understand how to produce product to make a company money. That's what they're there for. For us, these collectibles are, you know, emotionally driven. We, we, we put so much into it. So what is the solution? How do you get companies to make better selection of characters? Well, really, if you want something done right, it's kind of one of those things you have to do it yourself. And I'm not trying to, you know, put a giant spotlight on myself here, but I am a good example since I did work in the toy industry and I'm also a collector. So this is more or less the Justice League Unlimited line before I came to Mattel. And this is the Justice League Unlimited line after I came to Mattel. I mean, that other view image wasn't perfectly right. There were a few mix, but you get the point. I'm just trying to, uh, you know, demonstrate. When a collector is running a line, you're going to see major improvement. Uh, you're going to see character selection and details like packaging and exclusives catering to the collector. So the solution is the next time you go to Comic-Con and you go up to the Hasbro booth or the Mattel booth or the Lego booth, bring your portfolio. Have an exact goal of what you want to do in the toy industry. The more collectors working in the toy industry, the more we're going to solve these problems. Waiting for the industry to just change is like, you know, throwing, you know, drops of water in the ocean. What it's going to take is more collectors working in the industry. So I encourage you, get a job with the toy industry. Go for it. You know, have a specific job you want, and you too can be a winner. You too can help change the toy industry for the better. If we don't like the system, become the system. And that is how to solve almost all of these problems. The toy industry needs more collectors. So collectors out there, let's do it. Join the toy industry, become brand managers, become designers, 
Subscribe to this channel. Give it a thumbs up because that tells YouTube to share it with more people. And we need to get this message out there. I hope you enjoyed this. Comments always accepted and responded to. And I'll see you guys in the next video.